So let's look at our first example of basically using series that converge to numbers. Now, one of the quiz questions I asked was, for instance, when is a Taylor series useful? Now, that was related to functions. Uh, most of you recognize that one of my answers there was that I said it always must converge. And in physics, we actually don't always worry about them converging. That was not actually a correct answer because we do have things like asymptotic convergence. We do have things that don't, strictly speaking, converge but are very good approximations if we use just a few terms. What we're worried about is the error that it generates. Now, with series that give us numbers, one of the most famous examples is the geometric series and you've hopefully all learned about that. It's a constant, in this case r, that's multiplying everything and then it's increasing powers of r and r is some number that you're going to plug in. And we can define some various pieces to this. There is the finite version of it which is the sum from n equals 0 to capital N minus 1 of a r to the n and that's defined to be s sub n. Notice since I started at 0 to get capital N terms I go to n minus 1 because I'm not starting at 1. I can make this an infinite series the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a r to the n and that is simply going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of s sub n. Now, one of the cool things is we can do these sort of things in Mathematica. So the sum command is what sums series for me and it has a basic format that Mathematica uses a lot. I put what I want to sum in here so let's just say I wanted to sum 1 over x, whoops. Suppose I wanted to sum 1 over x. And then I put in brackets, I tell it that x is what I'm summing over and I'm going to go from 1 to 5. So that will add 5 terms together and it gives me the answer, 137 over 60. Notice because I did not tell it to do anything numerically and there is an exact answer here as a fraction, that's what it gave me, the fraction. Now, I can also tell it, let's do this to infinity and you can pull down a palette which I'll go into more detail in the next lecture or you can use escape, INF, escape and get infinity as a limit and Mathematica is perfectly happy to do the infinite sum except for the fact that 1 over x does not actually converge, which you hopefully remember from your series class. If I sum 1 over x, if you think about the integral of 1 over x is log x and that diverges from 1 to infinity so the series doesn't converge. However, if I make it 1 over x squared, it does converge and I get pi squared over 6. So I can do infinite series, I can do finite series. I can even do I can even do the one we were about to do. So let's just let a equals 1 and we'll do r to the n and we'll go n from, yeah, let's, let's just do the infinite case from 1 to infinity. And notice I get minus r over minus 1 plus r. And we'll see that that actually is the answer for this limit when we look at it in more detail. Oh, actually, no, I'm sorry. We're going to be do doing 0 to infinity. I forgot a term. And I get 1 over 1 minus r. Now, how do we get that if we want to do it by hand? Well, you could do that, but one of the cool tricks in physics. So I will do a limited number of proofs in this class and derivations. I see the point of derivations and proofs are when we have a cool trick to show you. 
So this is kind of cool trick number one. It's what I call adding and subtracting things. <laughs> so if I consider the series 1 over 1 minus r, this is actually a Taylor series you could in principle do. We'll review Taylor series in the next lecture, but some of you may remember this. What is the Taylor series for 1 over 1 minus r? Can you get the first two terms? If I write it as 1 minus r to the minus 1, right, because 1 minus r to the n starts out as 1 minus nr plus dot, dot, dot. So this is, since this is 1 minus r to the minus n, we start out as 1 plus r. And if you go back and review, it's just all the terms up to, yeah, just all the terms. And if we want to, we can just check that in Mathematica because Mathematica does series and I can do 1 divided by 1 minus x. Now, of course, I don't want an infinite series, so let's go, whoops. Oops. We're going to go three terms and we're going to expand about 0. Did I type that in the right way? Oh, no, I expanded about 3, sorry. We're going to expand about 0. Let's go ahead and take four terms. There we go. So the notation here for series, as I said, we put the thing we want to do. We're going to use curly brackets. If I, I, I knew it was either expand about and then the power I wanted to go to or the other way. I couldn't quite remember. I took my guess or I could look it up in the help function. But I'm going to expand about 0, I'm going to take four terms, and sure enough, I get 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x fourth plus order x to the fifth, which is enough terms in physics we know it's never going to change, and so it's just plus x to the n all the way out. Now, here's where our math tricks come in. So what if I take r to the n over 1 minus r? What is that going to look like? It's just r to the n times all that stuff. That's an easy one, hopefully. Then plus 1 plus dot, 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 dot. Now, having done that, how would I write this finite series? Knowing that I have these two things, these are both infinite series. How can I take these two infinite series and get this finite series? Ignore the a's for a moment. A factors out of everything. If you need to, ask the person next to you. How do I use these two infinite series to make this single finite series? Dividing would be painful, but it's a good guess. <laughs> what, what's my goal? To have a series that stops with which term? N minus 1. So what do I want to do? If I take this and subtract this, what am I left with? All the terms up to n minus 1, because rn and everything bigger gets subtracted away. And they're both infinite, so I get to subtract all the n terms. So I have a nice way to write this series. It's a times 1 minus r to the capital N over 1 minus r. Because they have the same denominator, so I can subtract them, and I get what I want. And now I have a nice formula for taking the limit as n goes to infinity. As long as 
let's do it right here, as long as r is less than 1, then when I take n goes to infinity, r to the n goes to what? If r is less than 1, r to the n goes to 0. If I take a decimal and keep raising it to n powers, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So that goes to 0. So if r is less than 1, this limit becomes a over 1 minus r, which we saw in Mathematica when a was 1 is exactly what I got, 1 over 1 minus r. So again, a common trick is subtraction, which should be spelt correctly, actually. And that is, it, it just is one of these things we do. Now, in principle, perhaps with Mathematica, you say, oh, I don't need to know that anymore because Mathematica did all this in shorthand. And that is true for some simple cases. But it really is nice to know the math behind some of the things you do in Mathematica when you reach a case that Mathematica can't do easily for you. Yes? Why after a subtraction will we get the upper one? So subtracting these two gives you this. Taking the limit as n goes to infinity as long as r is less than 1 gives you that. I know why. Uh, so we show how details? Where yeah. If I have this, this goes all the way out. At some point, it hits r to the n. And everything from r to the n out subtracts out and disappears. And the only term that's left is r to the n minus 1. Okay. So I just want to close with an actual practical example. So this shows you one little hint of some of the things we do with series. We worry about ways of summing to get numbers. These infinite series gives us numbers under certain conditions. And they, you'll see some homework problems where series like this, like geometric series, show up as your way to figure out a problem. A common one, the homework problem you have is stuff bouncing around in a box and a certain fraction escapes each time. So that ends up being your r, which is less than 1 because it's a fraction escaping. So this series will converge and you can find out how much stuff is where you want it. Another example of using a series is a classic problem of how many blocks can you balance at the end of a table before it falls? And how far out can you stick them? Now, the first block, the farthest out you can put it is where? Halfway, or it falls. And the reason it falls is the torques don't balance. So you have a normal force up from the table, and you have an mg down from its weight, and you want them aligned with each other, and then you get zero torque. So that's the first block. The idea here is the sum of the torques is equal to zero. Now, I'm not going to do this in super detail, but I'm going to just sketch the idea. For the nth block, you have, and I'm going to, whoops, I'm going to count down from up here. Block one is on the top, and then I count down. The nth block has n blocks on top of it, and it's over some distance x sub n from the side. And so it's sitting there. Its mg is still in its middle. And its normal force is up at some point. And the normal force has a value of n times mg. That's the number of blocks sitting on top of it, right? The normal force up is based from all the blocks coming on top of it. And so if I'm going to balance torques, I have an xn, that's where the normal force is acting, times the value of the normal force is going to balance MGL over 2. So the series I'm going to get out that I have to sum will go as L over N. So when I look at the total distance out, it'll be the sum over all the blocks of X sub N, and that's a sum over all the blocks of L over 2N. And what do we say about the series 1 over N? does not converge. So in principle, I can go an infinite distance out by stacking my blocks if I have an infinite number of blocks. So I can go as far as I want. What's the challenge, and this is where the physics comes in, 
is your x sub n have to keep getting smaller and smaller. And there is a physical limit on your resolution there as to how small you can really make x sub n. So you do actually have a limit because at some point you're not really going to be able to make x sub n any smaller just from limits of precision and accuracy. So that's a physical limit in a mathematical case where in principle you can go out to infinity. Make sense? The, the L is the length of the blocks and the L over 2 came from that, the torques from gravity are always at the middle because the weight's always in the middle. Like I said, I, I, the, the detail of solving the problem was not the main point. The main point was that you often get these series that are solutions to physics problems that on the one hand have a technical solution that say is an infinite distance but has a practical issue that when you actually try to construct the solution you're going to run into trouble. And that's the difference really between math and physics. So next lecture we'll go into series with functions and maybe start some complex number stuff. We will see you tomorrow. <laughs>